Shalom. Pre-trip rapture in September 2015. Many people believe the pre-trip rapture will happen in September of 2015. I have to say there are many events that will take place in September, but I'm sorry to tell you there is no pre-trip rapture. It was not heard of until the 1800s. So the question is, where did it come from? It came from the Roman Catholic Church, a Jesuit. His name is Francisco Ribera. He, he started it. And this is him right here. Okay. What does Jesuit mean? A Jesuit is a member of the Roman Catholic religious order, crafty, intrigual, equivocate, and crafty means, listen at this, skillful at deceiving others, cunning. So these guys are, they're very skillful. They're the best in the game at deceiving others. He put together a 500 page commentary in 1585 on the book of Revelations. This was his interpretation of Bible prophecy, mainly using the book of Revelations. This 500 page commentary was made popular by John Nelson Darby in the 19th century. So we got here, this guy here, Ribeiro, he started the 500 page uh, commentary. And let's see what's, this is some of what he had to say. It was called Futurism. All right, he believed um, the Antichrist, a single individual, would persecute and blaspheme the saints of the Most High, rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. So this is where, this is where the Christians get rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, but it can be found nowhere in scripture, but this is where it came from. Abolish the Christian religion, deny their master, um, destruction of Rome, be received by the Jews, pretend to be the most high, kill the two witnesses and conquer the world. And we know that how can he destroy Rome when he's using Rome? All right, let's see this, um, John Nelson Darby. And this is John Nelson Darby. And John Nelson Darby, he popularized that 500 page commentary. And then again, C.I. Schofield grab a hold of it. And then the evangelical Christians. So this is how it all came about. Now this John Nelson Darby. Watch this. Okay. He had a conference and he publicly described his church views, including the pre-tribulation rapture. So this was the actually the first time Darby was the one to bring out the pre-tribulation rapture. So what happened after that? He came up with um, his interpretation, which is dispensationalism. He created millions of Bibles, the Schofield Bibles. You've heard of them. They, they use them in the Christian churches. Um, his belief is still being used in places such as Dallas Theological Seminaries and authors and preachers such as Hal Lindsey and Tim LaHaye. So Hal Lindsey and Tim LaHaye are the two that started the movies. Uh, the first movie was in 1979 and it was called The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. And again, these are your pre-trip rapture movies. And then Tim LaHaye, he started 
the Left Behind series. And everybody that's never heard of pre-trip Rapture, they've most likely they've heard of the Left Behind movies. The question is, what does Yahusha have to say? And this is what I this is this is what I came to do. Expose this pre-trip rapture lie. In John 17 and 15, this is what Yahushua says, the Messiah. He says, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. So that's a prayer that goes against the pre-trip rapture because the teaching is, is to be raptured out of the world. And this prayer says, it says, he don't pray that you take them out of the world, but you should keep them from the evil one. And the way he's going to keep them from the evil one is through the wilderness. And this is a part, all through the 500-page commentary and all the other movies, it mentions absolutely anything about the wilderness. What else Yahushua said? In Matthew 24 and 13, he said, He that endures to the end shall be saved. So, we we all must endure to the end. The Christians are looking for an easy way out with this pre-trip rapture doctrine. And believe me, it does sound good. And it sounds, uh, um, it seems as if that would be the way to go. But that's not in his plan. That's, that's man's plan. All right, let's take a look at the parable between the tares and the wheat. And this Matthew... 13, I'm starting at 24 first. <clears throat> Another pair put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. And while men slept, the enemy came, and he sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the blade sprung up, it brought forth fruit. Then appeared the tares also. <clears throat> so we have uh, good seeds being sown and then tares coming up. Verse 27. So the servants of the, of the house came and said unto him, Sir, did you not sow this good seed in the field? And he's asking, where did the tares come from? And he said unto him, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, um, then do you want us to gather up the tares? And he said, no. If you gather up the tares, you would also gather up the wheat with them. And he says, let both grow together until harvest. And at the time of harvest, I would say to the reapers, gather ye first the tares. So the tares get gathered first. Bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn okay and I'm gonna go let's just pick up at 36 because his disciples didn't understand the parable then Yahushua sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. They want him to explain the tares, uh, the parable of the tares in the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that sowed the seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. And the tares are the children of the wicked one. So the tares, these wicked ones, we're talking about people that do not keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. They, that, would make you uh, to be a wicked one. The enemy sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it shall be at the end of the world. So here we're seeing the tares being gathered first. The wicked will be taken out of the world first, and the righteous seed will remain. And it says the Son of Man shall send forth his angels. They shall gather out the kingdom all that offend 
and them that do iniquity shall cast them into the furnace of fire that should be wailing and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father and he says he who have an ear let him hear all right couple more scriptures um, this is second Ezra 13 and 24 and it says know this therefore that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead so this is this goes along with the tares and the wheat and it's saying the ones that be left that's your righteous there is no pre trip rapture your righteous shall be left and the wicked shall be taken this is Enoch uh, chapter 1 and 1 and he Enoch blessed the elect and righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation the righteous will be living in the day of tribulation not raptured out of the world you see it that rapture goes against scripture he says, Blessed the elect and righteous who will be living in a day of tribulation when all the wicked and unrighteous are to be removed. 